I'm Little McGriggle, and welcome to the game Monster Prom. Now, I don't really know what to say about this game, but just listen to that music. That is freaking amazing. I love the music so much. Now, of course, we're going to be going with one player, and why not? I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to go into the full game. We're going to be playing the full game here. Ah. Spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Yeah, I know, right? High school was the sweetest years of my life. Now they're over. Tears. Back then we were young and unafraid. Well, sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. They used to be me when we were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Ah, oh, who are we? Who this guy? I, I forget who these guys are. Hello. Your name is Yellow, and your name is Oz. Hey, Oz. No, I don't, I don't, okay. I am not him, no. Okay. Uh, this is, yeah, Red. Amira. Hi, Amira. Yo. You're green, and your name is Brian. Hi. Yeah, you're cool. I'm looking at this girl. Your name is Blue. Your name is Vicky. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, wait. Pronoun? Uh, okay. Uh, Alright. Um, I don't know who we want to be. I guess we're going to go with Vicky. She looks cool. Yep, we're going to go with Vicky. Sweet! Yeah, I know. I forget who does the voice for Vicky. I know there are some people who have done voices. And so, and we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Yes. This girl looks like Undyne. Kind of reminds me of her. 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Oh boy. Hi, Aaron. Damien, you know, Aaron from the Game Grumps. I believe that's who voices Damien. Damien LaVey. 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Excellent. That's wonderful. <laughs> no, wait. No. Nate wants to battle voices Damien. Aaron is the voice of this very good-looking werewolf over here named Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Right, Liam the Lion Court, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay. Uh, Polygeist, 22? Question mark. Why are you questioning your age? Don't know if you're 22 or not. A party goes with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Oh, hello. Uh, Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. Excellent, that's amazing. It was clear, it had to be one of them. But who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yes! Excellent! Here we go. Oh boy. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into character stats. Great. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. What would be the coolest prize you could find in your box of cereal? Huh. A tiny piece of sharp metal so every scoop will be full of thrill and danger? Oh, boy. A sample of more nutritious breakfast options and show people are encouraged to stop eating their colorful crap. Uh, yes. 
The phone number of that sexy tiger on the front of the box. He's so passionate about breakfast and health that he's surely a great lover. Oh, boy. Excellent. That's amazing. You know what? We're definitely going with... It would be cool to find the phone number of that really sexy tiger. So charming. Oh, boy. Hi. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way of choosing the leaders of modern society? You put all the candidates in an empty room with a wild grizzly bear. Whoever kills the bear should be our president. If everyone dies, and it's obvious the bear should be our president. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, then. We create a reality, reality show called America's Next Top President, where the candidates compete in all kinds of physical and mental challenges. Voter turnout would increase, and we would turn a profit on it. Whoever can play the most heartbreaking violin solo wins. You know what? I think the only worthy way of the president proving themselves is to kill the bear. As you know, grizzly bears are big and burly, they're nasty and they're mean and yeah, I don't know. So bold. Excellent. Alright. What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? Whoa. Mm. Obscure 80s movie trivia, all the principles to build a financial empire, how to make a killer cocktail out of anything, sports things, lyrics to all Disney songs, how to set stuff on fire. I'm so sorry, but it has to be lyrics to all Disney songs. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Oh, hi, fish princess. Oh, boy, great. That's, oh, that's awesome. Oh. Uh, Okay. Now what? What happens now? Let's go. Okay, let's go. Our smartness is seven, boldness is seven, creativity four, charm seven, fun three, money five. Where are we going? Oh, you're going all over the place. Okay. Uh, let's go to the outdoors. I love being in the outdoors, personally. Me. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. It's so rad. Whoa, you gain two plus two fun. Awesome. S Scott and Miranda seem to be arguing about something. Your sweet meditation skills are clearly needed. Oh, hey, it's the sexy werewolf guy. Hello, bear. No. Uh, I know your our football team is called the Spooky High, Spooky Monsters Who Spook, but who also plays sports? But who's our mascot? Our mascot? Oh, dang, you're right. We don't have one. Oh, what about Misha the Mermaid? Mermaids are monsters. No, you're beautiful, hon. You're not a monster. Mermaids are not monsters. Well, the one in Pirates of the Caribbean are definitely monsters. No way, too girly. Try this. Wally the werewolf. Why is it gotta be a werewolf? We're the monsters, not the werewolves. Yeah, well, we're not the mermaids either. Hmm, maybe the problem is that the team name is trying to cover a huge, diverse group of people with a single label. No, coach is never wrong. We're just not thinking hard enough. Think, think, think. Hey you, you look like a hard thinker. What mascot should we use for our team? Uh, well, oh, uh, okay. Uh, easy, we'll just genetically engineer a cross between every kind of monster at the school, head of a werewolf, tail of a mermaid, hair of a medusa, angst of a vampire, we'll call it Abe the Abomination. Oh boy. Just find a regular human, dress him up in a business suit, and make him the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Corporate greed. That's the real monster. Ooh. I don't know. But I really want to go with A with the abomination. Totally. Finally, an idea that represents the true diversity of our school. We could use Daddy's Gene Lab, huh? Let's see. In order to fit all the monster parts in, the mascot will have to be about a hundred feet tall. Covered in nightmarish appendages and moist tentacles. Ugh. 
which means it shall provide great shade on hot game days. The tentacles can hold umbrellas. Yeah, because deadly genetic experiments are always a shortcut to a girl's heart. You gain plus two smarts and one boldness. Love it. That's excellent. Oh boy. Alright. Awesome. Where are we going? What, we have, do we have to sit at the table with someone? Oh. Well, you look cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with you. No, never mind. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures. Even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. Do we have any coins? We have we have five dollars. <gasps> How much? Are, oh, the five dollars. How much is this? A fake badass tattoo. A motivational poster. Oh fuck yes. Oh fuck yeah. Anything that has Bob Ross in it is a pure inspiration to me. Okay then. A blanket with two holes. Oh that's wonderful. A Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Uh, what's this? Uh, ooh, yeah, fuck it. I am told we're totally going with the motivational poster. Oh yeah. I'm always amazed at how people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. Intriguing. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Well then, it's the evening. Where? You know what? We're gonna go to the library. That day you spent some time on the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Ah, that's wonderful. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. Yeah, in real life, it is a stupid decision. And quite dangerous. Back to the game. But who cares? This time, it paid off. So, fuck it. You gain plus two money. Alright, okay. After eerie dropping on Miranda and Polly, waiting for the perfect moment to mention your influx of Insta followers when... Never fear, my ladies. You need not fight over me. Oh, you're, you, you're so charming. Him? Again? As royalty myself, I must say that even I find him to be... What's the term you use, Paulina? Extra AF. Friendship between two beautiful maidens shouldn't be soured over one as handsome, rich, and humble as I. No, you know what? Nobody who's rich is humble. No. But worry not, my sweet summer salads, I have found the perfect solution to protect your feeble hearts. You shall both marry me. Y'all got to settle down first and get to know them. I feel like you don't truly love these magnificent girls and you don't have their hearts in your best interest. You just want to get with them. I've dealt with male entitlement before, but this is the official next level. Yes, I am an inter interdimensional level, as our collective wedding will be as well. Yeah, not interested. You are hardly the first prince to seek my royal hand in courtship, and I don't see that you're bringing me much to the table. Interdimensional table, and I am the definition of marriage material. You'll never find a better suitor. I have a castle. I can defeat anyone at anything. I'll show you. I'll fight her. Um, is the interdimensional prince pointing directly at you? Why is your life like this? You would fight a girl. Yeah, you know what? That proves that you're a douchebag and you don't respect women because you would fight one. I could defeat you at any challenge. Name your weapon and prepare to lose. Miranda and Polly are watching you closely. Maybe you can skew the prince's challenge to really impress one of them. Wait, did we ch Okay, you know what would be wild? Naked fencing with live weasels instead of swords. What? As a royal, you must fancy yourself pretty clever, so let's see you win 
at losing. It's true, royalty is very clever. I know, because I'm royalty. Very well then, let us proceed with the challenges. The series of trials begin. You much, you each post selfies to Instagram. The prince instantly gains 12 followers while you lose 10. Round one goes to the home team, it would appear. Sorry about your unfortunate face. Oh, thanks. Next up your are classic feats of athleticism. The prince kicks your ass up and down at archery, fencing, and bumper cars. Finally, you engage in a stirring round of Monopoly. The prince wins within six moves. What? Sir! Sir! Why are you so good at Monopoly? Uh-huh. Normally, Monopoly might last days, but I, with my incredible skills, have managed to win at once, because I am a winner. Now, surely I have proven myself a worthy and winning groom for both my blushing brides. Dude, the competition was to win at losing. By winning everything you've actually lost. Oh! Ha! <laughs> In your face! What? No, it cannot be. And yet it is. Sadly, even though you are royal blood, it would seem as if you are the biggest loser of all. Ooh. No! Curse you, confusing semantics! The prince lets out a heartbroken sob and disappears in a burst of heartbroken light. You may have made yourself look like a total loser, but at least your friends aren't both marrying that douchey prince. You gain plus two smarts and plus one fun. You know, I'm glad that we sent that prince off, because he's... No, he, yeah, no, he's not a very nice guy. Not very... no. Alright, week two, here we go, yeah! We're on our way now. Vicky! Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go to the gym. Oh, that's intense. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you develop, deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. No, not really. You gain plus two charm. Oh, excellent. So, woe is me. Could Miranda possibly be doing this because she wants attention? Only one way to find out. Oh, hello, I did see you there. As I was standing here, suffering gallantly in silence. She did, and she wasn't, but okay. I had the most tragic injustice befall my early this morning. I was rejected from our school's water polo team. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm so sorry. They claimed I was mistaken about how polo was conducted underwater. Excuse me, but I was raised underwater. How is one supposed to even play water polo without a heavily armored seahorse as a mount? Oh, I ask you. Perhaps I offended them when I implied they were too impoverished to afford sea steeds? If so, I, I would love to make reparations. But it may be too soon for me to show my face. Would you be so kind as to take them the gift of this omelette to begin the healing? I am told that peasants consider eggs to be a delicacy. Um, obviously. And what would make the jester even better is the personal touch of uh, toppings? Caviar? You, you, Covered scan crabs. You'll never forget this was a present from a mer princess. An elegant stenciled card with your sincerest apologies, a list of all their fears, and a bundle of compromising photographs. Uh, oh, totally going with that. Oh yes, how better to show that I am truly making an effort to get to know them on the most personal of levels. I shall do their names in beautiful calligraphy, print their fears in gold leaf, and I shall adorn their compromising nudes with adorable glitter stickers. Oh, your eyes. Okay. I may have been misunderstood before, but how could anyone misinterpret this kind of gesture? Take the omelette and make sure to take lots of pictures of them eating the eggs so we can all remember how generous I was. With a kiss on the cheek. Miranda hands you the omelette and waves you on your way. You regain plus two smarts and one charm. Oh boy. Yay, we're in week two. Let's go. Hey! Who that? 
No, you know what? Totally, I'm gonna go spend time with these guys. You approach Scott and Polly's table to find them crouch behind a pile of jelly deserts. Bro. Plotting? Thank bros if you're here, bro. Come on, join our huddle. Maybe you're curious about our huge pile of jelly jam gelatinous dessert cups? Well, wonder no more. We're going for the jelly prize. Yeah, we're gonna win it. If we collect the foil covers of a hundred jelly desserts, we will be the lucky winners of one free jelly dessert. Ah! But right now we're stuck. We've only got nine to nine. That means we need, we need one more, Scott. We need one more. We need one more. You give them your jelly dessert, but you already threw it at the bird person you hate. Guess you've got to make a choice. Steal the final jelly dessert from the jelly dessert factory. Make it like a puppy dog and beg. All things are sweeter when she through pity. Yeah. Begging? What? I never beg, except in my in intricately choreographed erotic scenarios. Is this an intricately choreographed erotic scenario? No, even better. This is gazing sadly at people until they give us food. You happily follow Scott around the cafeteria whimpering at people for their jelly desserts. Polly just eats all the stockpile jelly desserts while you're busy begging. Also, no one is willing to give you any jelly desserts. But that doesn't matter. As the saying goes, begging is its own reward. That and the quality of time you get to spend with Scott. That's also a reward. Oh yeah! Okay, alright then. Okay, where are we going now? Uh, class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Yeah! Awesome. In our class, you're having a hard time looking at the unspeakable eldritch relic you're supposed to be painting, when Liam and Miranda thankfully provide you with a distraction. What are you talking about, Miranda? That relic clearly represents the futility of man's quest for meaning in a world of consumer goods. But, how do you know that, Liam? To me, it just looks like a gruesome and horrific offering to a pitiless god, like Uncle Anathema used to make. Why, it's easy, Miranda. When I want to discern the true meaning of a piece of art, I simply... I simply... Uh... Uh... Look at the bottom and read the clearly printed label that explains the true meaning of the art. Make it up. Go on the fly, man. Improvise. Not so fun. Oh. I don't make anything up, you buffoon. My opinions on art are objectively correct. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> yes, I agree with Liam. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about, after all. Perhaps, or were you jealous of Liam's abilities to objectively understand art? I'm used to it, the social isolation I experience is entirely to do with jealousy, nothing at all to do with me being an asshole. Can you teach me to objectively understand the meaning of art? No. Curse you, cruel fate! Liam and Miranda ignore you after that, and you're forced to return your attention to the malevolent statue. It slowly drives you mad and you get a C- minus on your drawing. No, I lost my creativity. Oh god, no. That's awful. Uh, what are we gonna do? We okay, we're on to week three. Hey. Where are we going now? Hmm. Library. Congratulations. You have been chosen. Win big. That day, you spend some time on the library's PC, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. Oh, wow. Mm, wow, wonderful. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose. Wow, we lost a lot of karma. Oh, boy. Uh... Here we are again. Oh, woe is me. Miranda throwing a hissy fit? Must be Tuesday. Still, what else are you going to do? Study? Huh. Oh, hello, don't mind me. I'm simply enduring the most horrible injustice to happen to anyone ever. You shan't believe such cruelty could happen at her own school. But just today, Mrs. The Loch Ness Monster told me that I shall be receiving 
a B plus in her class. A B plus. And all because I seldom attend. Does she not understand the importance of my daily royal manicures? School's important and you need to work hard. You deserve that B plus, miss. Such a horrid grade will surely cause father to cease paying for my seahorse insurance as punishment. And then how shall suitors call upon me? Well, I guess you're just gonna have to go without. Oh, the tragedy. If only someone knew of a way I could, I don't know, perhaps break into Principal Giant Spider's office, access his private computer and alter my grade. No. No. I don't want to do any of that. Oh. Ah, I guess we're doing it anyway. What a splendid idea. Crying is what I'm third best at. Miranda goes into Principal Giant Spider's office and without missing a beat, bursts into tears. P -p Principal, everything is horrible. This could be because I I'm having my monthly mer trouble. Panicked Principal Spider grabs a tissue in each of his eight arms and shoves them all in Miranda before fleeing outside. With him gone, you pop out of the suspicious, suspiciously large valise Miranda brought in with her and hack the system in no time. Oh, look at that! I have an A+. I guess I underestimated my own amazingness. I'm very surprised by this development. I suppose as long as we're here, I might as well fill this thumb drive with top secret school security footage. No reason. It seems on the level, definitely don't ask any follow-up questions. Just again, be bold and be cool. Just gain three boulders and be cool. Okay, I'm cool. We're cool here. We're all cool. Week three, noon. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Hey, we're, um, we're gonna get to visit the cat again. Good old Vicky. What's it going to be today? A bloody tampon. What? Oh, okay. Oh, oh my! <laughs> a bag of cocaine! Alright then. A corpse. Ugh. You know, for good old... Ew, a used tampon from the former queen. Former prom queen. Oh, that is just disturbing, my friend. Oh no, sweetheart. I get the purpose of business. I just, I'm poor. I can't afford any of what you got in stock. Hey, I don't know you. Okay, I guess we're not uh, going to the any more tables. Let's go. Okay, I guess we'll go to the bathrooms. Why? That day you skip class and just hang out, hang out somewhere. We hung out in the bathroom. That's where we are. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give plus zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Yep, I give zero shits. Like I said, a very good friend of mine, I am learning to just not give a shit. You're minding your business when Miranda comes rushing up to you, clearly distraught. Most terrible news, friend! I have just watched the documentary Game of Thrones, and now I fear for my own royal family. I did not realize how susceptible we might be to random acts of treachery, or how often we romance our siblings. Ugh. Uh, I don't want to be shot in the chest by a crossbow while sitting on the toilet. That doesn't sound proper at all. Please help me put my poor mind at ease. How can I possibly identify potential traitors in my court? Uh, just keep an eye out for the classic signs. Shifty eyes, hooded black cloaks, ordered knives in bulk. Pretty much everybody is a traitor. Just spin a bottle and whoever points at it, kill them. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, let's not go too far. I don't know, just just keep an eye out. But that would mean... <gasps> uh, could Lord Darkheart Stabbington be a traitor? Um, yeah. I must warn father at once. We have to find a new royal babysitter. Oh boy. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Unless that name was Darkheart Stabbington. You gain plus two smarts and one money as a reward. Excellent. Oh, we're doing fantastic. All right then.
No, what? We'll just go to the outdoors. Hold on. I just remembered something. This game is totally reminding me of the Yogg. You know, that game that we've played a, a while ago. Because of how the game is laid out with this, something you went all over the place and ra your story went randomly. This is totally what that's reminding me about. Anyway, let's go to the outdoors. And we started another rave. At one point, one the small magical Latino cat slips on a banana peel if you start to laugh at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. You laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal two fun from him. Hooray! Yay, we stole fun from somebody. You catch Miranda monologuing about her problems to no one. She often does this. It's like she's accustomed to having a royal scribe following her everywhere she goes. Oh, whatever shall I do about my army? We haven't had a proper war in months and the soldiers are becoming ever so anxious. I tried sending the servants to give them tummy rubs and even putting extra leaves and sticks in their cages. But they just kill the servants with the sticks. Oh. I never thought managing an entire branch of the military would be so challenging. How can I possibly keep my soldiers entertained? Pinatas! Oh, not fun. Okay. No, I don't keep up with current events. I'm so sorry, princess. Our last war was against the pinata people of the Marianas Trench. What? Even if there were any pinatas left in the world, which there sadly are not, I'm afraid the influx of pinatas would mercilessly remind me of my poor soldiers that the happy war years are at an end. Hap there is nothing happy about war, my dear princess. That would be cruel. Too cruel. Even more cruel than what we did to the pinata people. No, don't speak! I will hear no more about this. Okay, this explains why you had such a hard time finding a pinata for your last birthday party. It does not. However, explain why you wanted a pinata at your birthday party, you dork. Hey, Mr. Narrator, you don't have to be a douche. Oh, we lost two fun and one smart. Oh no, the horror. Okay, we're at noon, week four. Oh, we're gonna go to the table and uh, we are going to visit. Huh. Hey, it's that sexy tiger guy. You're about to take the first bite of a delicious cafeteria lunch when a coach appears out of nowhere. Whoa, hello there. Stop! You can't eat that! You're not warmed up yet! Do you want to strain your jaw, sprain your esophagus, pull your intestines? Mmm, I thought I taught you kids better than this. Come on, stand up. Let's get our food on. You look disappointed. Don't worry, little buddy. I'll let you choose a workout. We got two options. Playing with your food, specifically playing football with your food. Absolutely ridiculous number of push-ups. Nah, thanks. I'll just play with my food like I was playing with football. Coach helps you set up four your peas and mashed potatoes in a classic football formation. And you animate them with forbidden magics. Perfect! Another food will get all warmed up so it's ready to take the nutrition all the way to your end zone. The end zone is your stomach and eventually your butt. Ha! <laughs> nice. Your food throws down in the most intense football game ever. It, comes, it all comes down to a controversial call by the broccoli ref. You turn around to find the whole rest of the cafeteria watching your game and betting on the results. <laughs> They're even more entertained when you command all the players to dive into your mouth. You gain plus four fun. Oh, hell yeah! Ah, that's great. That's fantastic. Okay, here we go. We're getting close. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Uh, let's go to the auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have decided to give you figurative oral sex. Wonderful. <laughs> Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Ah, yes. I do enjoy the plays in drama. You catch Miranda posing in front of a mirror, gazing dreamily at her reflection. Oh, how would I love to win the talent show? Of course, Daddy pays a dozen peasants to tell me how talented I am every morning. 
But that's not the same. After all, they're peasants. Ma'am, stop your screaming. Uh, ma'am, what did I just say? Okay, thank you. No, to hold that heavy spiky trophy in my hands, or rather, to have my servants hold it. Oh, that would make me the happiest princess in all the land. But I'm so nervous. What if they don't like my song? What if my skin is too scaly? You're a mermaid. You know that, right? What if I accidentally say a swear? Ma'am, I never. Okay, Miranda, be calm. Remember what Daddy says. If you don't calm down, failure is 100% assured. That's not helping. Now I'm even less calm. Looks like Miranda's caught in a vicious cycle. Quick, help her out before she worries herself to death. Uh, a uh, great trick for beating stage fright. Picture everyone naked. That's what I did. Just kidding. Don't worry about these chumps in the audience. If they don't love you, then they're untalented at recognizing talent. Hell yeah. They'll go with that. Uh, not so charming. Okay. That's just what daddy's peasants always tell me. Wait. Are you one of daddy's peasants? You are, aren't you? No matter where I go, I can't escape them. I simply cannot trust anyone. Be gone, filthy peasant. I am on a quest for love that is genuine. Oh, how terrible it is to be adored by everyone on penalty of death. You wouldn't know. Ah, oh, great. Yeah, week five. Excellent. Let's go. Oh, let's go. We're gonna go to class because we're a good student. Hi. Uh, we have five. Oh, use, oh, use tampon. What are these? Impractical, fun, kind of funny glasses. Uh, they aren't, but they're so ridiculous that they're still fun in their own twisted way. A uh, sexy fake Latin accent. Why? The hardest thing is being yourself, honey, but a Latin accent is close to second. I'm too poor for the cocaine! Oh god, it costs ten! Are you sure about this? You can always use Wikipedia to get the general idea and still be able to act as if you read it. You know what? Why not? We're gonna buy it. Oh boy. Bye. Yeah, week five. It's noon. Let's go. I don't know why. You find Scott and Damien shoveling hot dogs and mashed potatoes in their mouths while Coach cheers them on. Oh, you guys are ridiculous. Go, boys, go! Munch your way to victory! Ah, there is no there is true support. No, there is no true sport in eating contest. Thanks, crotch. Okay then. She's, uh, let me eat. It looks like it's a pretty fair fight so far. But where's the fun in that? Time to step in and tip the balance. Distract Scott with surprise fireworks. Slather Damien's dogs and holy ketchup. Oh my god. Okay then. Nah. I totally am gonna distract Scott with surprise fireworks. Oh, what the hell were you planning on setting off these fireworks in here anyway? You let him rip. Hey, 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 stop that! Who did that? Who's making noise? I'm yelling because I'm scared. They found us, Scott, the Viet Gong. What? Oh, lordy, it's Nam all over again. What? S Sir, are you alright? Scott and Coach flee the cafeteria, and Damon lets out a sigh full of equal parts of relief and mashed potatoes. Oh, thanks. I was just eating like I normally do when those two idiots came over and turned into a sport. Yeah! It's not my fault! I eat so fast! I've got a literal furnace in my stomach! Damien let's say you have some of his half-chewed hot dogs. Nice! Someone would say that's almost like I'm making out with him. Ah, cool. Excellent. That's exact. that's definitely what I wanted to do. Alright then. Well, we're getting close to prom. I don't know. Go to the gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. The match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against part of the other team's leader's charm. The commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by determination. What? I didn't know we were playing Undertale. 
Finally, you win and take plus two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. As you wander around talking to yourself like a weirdo, you notice Miranda walking around talking to herself like a weirdo. She seems to be addressing an imaginary crowd. Hello. Oh, hello! I was just practicing my royal way for when I am crowned prom queen. I feel there is a lot to be learned before I ascend the throne. Well, you have an amazing voice, princess. Naturally, as a princess, I am already great at wearing crowns, talking to cute animal friends, quelling rebellions to excessive force, and singing sweetly. But I lack administrative experience. I have never so much as issued a decree. I wonder what my first should be. You don't have the heart to tell her that the role of prom queen doesn't come with sovereignty. Maybe you should just give her some suggestions instead. Taxes! Taxes are so fun! Paint. Every student pink. Oh hell yeah, go with that. Not so creative? I don't know, because I, I don't know. You start to tell her that it could be any color she wants, but just continues talking over you. I might as well just set them all on fire and turn them all black. And what good would that do? What else? What use would my subjects be to me if they were all charred to a crisp? What a horrid suggestion! You try to remind her that you never said anything about setting anyone on fire and that she was all on her own. But she's already hardly stormed off. Ah, great, I lost more creativity! Oh, woe is me! Oh boy, week six and we're almost at prom time! Yay! Uh... Go to class. That day you learn a ton of spells that are all as cool as they are seemingly useless. A spell to renew sticker stickiness. A spell to turn chocolate and vanilla ice cream into vanilla and chocolate ice cream. What's the difference? <laughs> There's no difference. A spell to gain plus two smarts. Oh, excellent. You actually use that last spell and you gain plus two smarts. Hey, Miranda oblivious to everything that's happened approaches you weeping. Have you seen the news? The most dreadful thing has happened. The Lemurian monarchy has been overthrown. King Kraken no longer sits upon the throne of gold and baby skulls. Oh, those filthy revolutionaries are saying he stole their daughters and ate their sons and forced everyone to work for free in the uranium mines. So he made a few shrewd financial decisions. That's no reason to dispose him. If some innocent kidnapping and slave labor was enough to get the peasants in an uproar, I shudder to think of my own kingdom. Do you think my people might resent being forced to hold up their corner of the palace where the foundation is crumbling? Do you think that the 100% income tax and the random cannonballs we fired into the villages might be taken as something other than expressions of goodwill? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, definitely. Could this plague of civil war- No, sorry. Could this plague of civil unrest infect my own domain? Oh, perish the thought. I am inconsolable. Console me. How am I to safeguard my kingdom against the fate of good King Kraken? Replace your subjects with minus robots. Build a robot army a few months ago and still have the plans. Fishes love belly rubs. Give the fishies belly rubs. Save the fishies with belly rubs. Ah, how elegant, how humane, how cost effective. I'll implement it at once, but soon. Oh, the horror, the plan could have not gone more wrong. You see, to avoid the drudgery rubbing bellies myself, I conscripted a hundred thousand serfs to do it for me. But when the serfs saw the quantity of work facing them, they, I can hardly bring myself to say it. Unionized. I imagine how I must have felt imprisoning all those serfs. Some of them were my very favorites. Well, his father says a princess must take responsibility for making other people take responsibility for her mistakes. That's not the way to live up to your mistakes and learn. What I mean to say is, I blame you for this. Well, miss, when some of the serfs escape from prison a few days later, they blame you too. The beating they give you saps you with two boldness and one fun. Oh, hey, that's not fair. Yeah, it's almost prom time. Let's go. 
Okay, let's go. We're gonna go here with this guy over here, you guys. Yeah. You come upon Damon sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread while her eating serves chow down obediently at a neighboring table. I still don't get why you collect all these stupid forks and spoons and shit. I mean, every- even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing? That's lame as hell, it's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat, you serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally, they aren't. Serfs must eat with their hands as befits the lower classes. So you're saying the silverware collection has no practical purpose. Things have practical purposes? These two could go round and round like this forever unless you say something to resolve the dispute. Damien's right, Miri. Maybe it is time we started murdering people with their silverware. Totally go for that! Hell yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I mean, I was just giving her shit, but I am in favor of any plan that gets more people murdered. Oh, how barbaric! Are you sure that's the right thing to do? Yep, 100%. Absolutely. Well, alright then. Yum yum. Daisy. Take the sharpest of his silvered wares in your filthy peasant hands and go out murdering, would you? I was kind of hoping you would do the murdering yourself. If we're living in an age where a lady can't outsource her senseless murders to her servants, I don't know what the world is coming to. Fair enough. As long as the murders get done, I guess I don't care. Miranda even outsources some silverware murders to you and Damon as a team. It really brings you closer to each other. Oh boy, alright then. Well, well, it's almost time for prom. Hmm. I totally want to go outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're casually chatting with one, a small magical Latino cat. You start telling that hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You didn't know which one. The one involving the beehive, the blow up doll of the president, oh. The penguin mask and the mystery of the goblin king. What do you mean, Jareth from Labyrinth? Slowly lots of people start joining you to hear the story. By the time you say where the Goblin King was, 100 people are, or so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures all the laughter and turns it into plus two fun. Oh, hell yeah, we're the funnest party people ever. Okay. Da da da, da 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 da. Oh my word, what a wonderful, beautiful, exciting day. I hope someone can share in my joy. My great aunt sea monster and holy terror make Kraken face oh Cthulhu. Oh, has just received an award for her work with shipwrecks. She's now one of their leading causes. I want to send her my congratulations, but no one from the postal service will go near her lair for fear of their lives. Oh, if only some brave hero would volunteer to deliver this important and time-sensitive missive. Why, is a letter of congratulations so time-sensitive, you ask? Well, it's because of, well, you see, it's that there are very special congratulations with instructions to do something congratulatory for herself, you know? Just get her the letter. There's something fishy about this request, but you've never let that stop you before. You come up with a foolproof plan. Dynamite the toilet, dive into the sewer, and swim there for yourself. You know what? I'm gonna hire Scoober. That's what? Ah, uh, okay. With just a touch of a button, you're able to call a Scoober driver to your school. You give him very specific instructions as to the latitude and longitude, but conveniently leave out the part about the sea monster. A few days later, you see the fruits, the mirror of your labor. Um. A missing scuba driver turned up drowned in my kingdom, and now an... Oh boy, Al Jazabrefish article is accusing my father of kidnapping and murder? You kill one delivery man for being late, and suddenly every driver found drowned in their car. Nearly your castle is your fault. Thanks for framing my father you mur for your murder. Who knows how many journalists he's going to have to take care of this time. Oh my god. In class later, she passes you an index card with a frown face drawn on it, which is pretty harsh from Miranda. Ouch. Yay, we lost more charm. 
The monster prom draws near. Vicky, who will you ask to prom? I am totally gonna ask out Damien. What's up? Ask Damien. Yeah, I'm gonna ask Damien. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom with you? Stupid fuck! I need spice in my life. And if you were a spice, it would be, um... <laughs> oh, okay! I'm sorry! I just really like you and I want to ask you to prom! What a loser! Uh, uh. Failing at monster prom broke the essential process of growing up in your life. You became fixed on it and you never became a functional adult. Now you're just an old person that sits at parks and talks to strangers about the time you almost got a date to the monster prom. It is as weird as sad as it sounds. Oh god, no! Best at giving fierce makeovers. Well, I guess there goes prom. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After months of prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened and it was wonderful. Hell yeah. Damien became an interior designer specialized in torture machines. Last month, Vogue magazine called his products the refined marriage between Macrober and Chic. Nice. Scott became a world-renowned athlete, but he ended his career to come back to his hometown and take on the job of athlete he admired the most. Now he's here again in high school working as coach. Oh, Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said Adelaide would put that mean bitch in her place. But you know what? Vera ended up making adult life her little bitch. Ooh. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone. Just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. Mm, yeah, we were! Okay. Well, that was Monster Prom. Gotta say I'm a little heartbroken because we got rejected at prom. But life goes on. And hey, look, it's Slenderman! Just kidding. Okay, we will just wait for these uh Okay, so that was the credits. Dragon he unlocked. You've just unlocked an erotic fanfic about dragons. This is about to get weird. It is about to get very weird indeed. But that's the end of the game for now. I am going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I fucking loved this game. I loved every minute of it, and I am so happy I got to play this. But for now, I'm going to leave this video here, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye!